and now joining me we have Kyle from Linville Caverns and we're very excited to talk with him a little bit about the caverns today on the show. Thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. Absolutely. Now for any of our viewers like myself who have never been out to the caverns, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, what we do, we offer a guided tour of the cavern. It okay. lasts about 35 minutes. The guides will take you through and they'll show you the different types of limestone formations. Uh, they tell you a lot of history about the caverns. Mm -hmm. You'd see the animal life. Uh, we've got, you know, trout and a lot of insects and stuff that live in there. The bats are pretty much gone for now. They hibernate yeah. from around, uh, <laughs> I guess, about November to March. Okay. So. Very cool. Now, talk with us a little bit about what exactly a cavern is for someone who's um, not. You know, there is a difference between a cavern and a cave. A cave is basically just, you know, a hole in the ground that will receive partial sunlight. Right. A cavern is, is definitely more, a cavern's more or less got the limestone formations. You have your stalactites mm -hmm. that grow downwards, your stalagmites that grow upwards, and uh, um, basically that's the biggest difference. But our cave is a, is a very nice cave. It's, it's a smaller cavern, which is, is kind of neat too because it's very personal. You're very close to all the formations that you're right. looking at. And we offer a pretty, pretty entertaining tour as well. So. Awesome. So what is this experience like when you're actually down in the cavern? Well, for a first time, you know, visitor, it's, I describe it, it's almost like being on another planet. It's just so <laughs> different from what you're used to seeing right. in, in everyday life. Uh, you know, it's, it's fairly cold in the cave. It's around 52 degrees year-round. It's a year-round temperature. Okay. And, uh, you know, our cave is very active, so the formations are still growing. So you're going to get dripped on and stuff like that. But okay. it's a neat experience for sure. Very cool. Now, is this claustrophobic at all down there? Um, there's one area of the cavern that, that claustrophobic people do have a problem with. Okay. It's basically like an offshoot of the tour, so it's optional. You don't have to go back there. But it is a neat part of the tour because you actually get to see the lower level of the cave that's filled with water. Okay. And we take you out over this little metal bridge and get to look into it. It's really cool, though. Very cool. And now, how did you get involved with this? I actually started working uh, there about 13 years ago, right at high school, and just enjoyed the job, stuck with it. Very so. cool. Now, is there a lot of upkeep? What kind of goes into um, As far as that? inside of the cave, the only maintenance is just electrical, just mm -hmm. the, the lights and stuff like that. Um, the property outside, you know, we also maintain too. It's mostly just landscaping type stuff. So. Right. Now, do you actually lead tours yourself? I do pretty much everything. Um, I'm assistant manager now, so I manage all the, the tour guides, um, assistant maintenance man, so I get to work outside a lot. And I do still give tours. I gave one this morning, actually. Coming up. Now, is it possible to get lost in the caverns? No. Okay, no. good to know. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> especially with your tour guide, no, it's not possible. Okay. Now, there are caves that get much bigger that, that is a possibility, especially a wild cave that you, mm -hmm. you just go explore on your own, but uh, no. Right. Very safe cave, very easy cave. I mean, you know, we can accommodate wheelchairs. Okay. Uh, it's a concrete walkway throughout, so any, any, you know, from young kids to elderly people do great. It's a awesome. very easy tour. Now, do you have a lot of families that come through? What's kind of your um, In the summertime, it's mostly families. Um, we get a lot of field trips during school. So we see a, a wide variety of people, for sure. Very neat. You were saying in the winter, things are a little bit slower. A little bit slower. We're actually only open on the weekends during the wintertime. Um, we don't see a whole lot of people. Uh, it's December, January, and February that we're only open on the weekends. So other than that, it's seven days a week except for Thanksgiving. Right, so things are really starting to pick up for you guys. It, it is, like. yeah. We're starting to get our field trips coming in. Uh, as soon as school lets out, we'll be slammed mm -hmm. all summer long, so, which is what we like. So. Absolutely. Now, do people need to get tickets ahead of time? How does that work? No, uh, you actually buy tickets when you get there. Um, you know, we do reserve for large groups. If you have a group of 25 or more, we do ask that you call and reserve a spot for that. And, um, you know, uh, a busy day, the best time to get there is probably early in the morning uh, or later in the evening, the middle of the day is just going to be quite busy so right absolutely yeah. well this sounds like a really great place to visit and a great place to work you must really enjoy yeah, it yeah like i said i've been there quite a while it's a fun job you meet all kinds of people so uh, it's pretty cool. cool what's your favorite part about working at the cat um well i do enjoy working outside mm -hmm. a lot but uh giving tours is fun i mean i've been doing it so long it's just like autopilot right pretty much but i really like meeting the, the diversity of people and I've met some really cool people up there, for sure. Absolutely. Now, what kinds of things should people wear when they're coming to the cabin? Well, uh, it is 52 degrees, so um, I'd recommend, you know, a light jacket. Yeah. You know, and in our, our rainier seasons, it's pretty drippy, so we usually warn people ahead of time, you know, if they're going to need rain ponchos or something like that. Right. But um, uh, it's a concrete walkway, so I've seen people wear flip-flops in there before. I wouldn't recommend it because your feet are going to get dirty, but, um, you know, just any kind of shoes, any kind of clothes. 
Right. So, so how do these things actually form inside the cavern? Talk to us a little bit um, about the environment. Basically, uh, like in our, our case, we're located under Humpback Mountain. Mm -hmm. So the mountain itself is made up of a rock called Shady Dolomite, which is a water-soluble rock. Okay. So basically, the, the actual rooms or passages you're walking through were either eroded away or they were dissolved away by carbonic water, which basically just happens when the, the rainwater seeps through the ground soil, it picks up carbon dioxide, makes it acidic or carbonic. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me, once, um, once the cave was actually carved out and then the, what the dripping water was allowed to come mm -hmm. through, what happens basically is uh, that water, as it drains down through a series of cracks above the mountain called fissures, it picks up a lot of minerals and sediments. Uh, by the time it gets to where the, the actual cave area is, it'll make deposits of the minerals on the ceilings, the walls, and the floors of the cave. And once the carbon dioxide that was in that water dissipates, those little minerals are literally stuck to where they were. So, you know, it's, a, it's basically an accumulation of mineral deposits. Mm -hmm. It's a really slow process, though. They estimate uh, a cubic inch, which you're talking about something about the size of a dice out of a board game. Right. That's about 125 years just to form that wow. amount. So. You know, you know, we get people that are really interested in geology come in. We get people that just, you know, saw the sign on the side of the road and said, no, I want to check out a cave. So it's a really neat experience, especially if you've never been into a cave and you're in this area, you need to check us out for sure. So. Definitely. Well, I'm very impressed. It sounds like you know your awesome. stuff. Thank you. A lot of technical little details right. there. But it does sound like a very educational thing, especially yeah, it for is. field trips. And it, it has its aspects of entertainment, too. So. Absolutely. Now, where are you guys located and how do you get there? We are located off Highway 220. It's about 32 miles south of here. So okay. we're pretty much directly in between the town of Linville and the town of Marion. So it's, it's really easy to find. You can Google directions. So. Awesome. And seven days a week, you said? Yep. Except for uh, uh, Thanksgiving. We're, we're always closed on Thanksgiving. And then through the week in the winter months, we're All closed. Right. So. Sounds great. Well, definitely a good place to check out. I know I'm going to have to check it out. I've never been. And thank you so much for coming in to share You're with quite us. welcome. Of it was course. nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you as well. Thank you. And we will be back right after these messages with more of the Mountain Television Network.